before I begin my homily, I just want to clear one thing up. You know, some may be wondering when we were processing in, this is not a pink vestment. It is actually a rose vestment. It's an entirely different shade of pink if you actually look closely. So I don't know how often we wear it here at the Fathers of Mercy, but I've opted to wear it today. But I would like to at least connect it to our Marian devotion, especially of praying the Holy Rosary, where we give Our Lady mystically a rose every time that we pray a Hail Mary in the Holy Rosary. So if anything, I'm doing this for Our Lady. Now, truly the reason why I'm wearing rose today is because it's the third Sunday of Advent, which is also known as Gaudete Sunday. And if you've seen an Advent wreath, the third candle is the color rose. And this comes from, that is, Gaudete Sunday, from the first line of the Mass today. And it's from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians that states, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So today we celebrate a Sunday of joy. Now, why is this specifically given in the third Sunday of Advent? Because we should be joyful, that is, in anticipation of joy toward Christmas. In other words, the church is saying, the Lord is almost here in his birth. So hopefully you have this joyful anticipation to welcome him into your hearts, to welcome him into your life. When we say, joy to the world, the Lord has come. And specifically, if you continue to read that line in the letter to the Philippians, St. Paul states, because the Lord is near. So joy is one of the themes of today's Mass. There should be, during Advent, a longing, a yearning, quite simply, a holy desire to be in union with God during this preparation time of Christmas. But with that being said, there also has to be a vigilance, a readiness. We have to be prepared for when he comes. Or when he passes by, we may not even know that he's here. So, in other words, the church is trying to tell us at every moment of our life, we are moving closer to death. But at the same time, we are moving closer to eternal life in heaven. Death is simply a transition, God willing, if we're in the state of grace, to eventually get to heaven. So that should give us joy of moving closer to eternal life by our Lord's incarnation. And to tell you the truth, some people get joy mixed up, especially in our world today. Many people think that joy is pleasure, like gratification of the senses. So someone may say, well, I'm happy because I watch the movies that I like the TV shows, the sporting events. That's what gives me happiness, some may say. I'm happy because I listen to all the music I can download. I hear a lot of gossip, and I have the latest news at my fingertips. Again, senses. I'm happy because I eat what I want. The desserts, the sweets, the chocolate gummy bears, whatever it may be, this supposedly gives us happiness. Some, based on senses of touch, especially found in sexual pleasure, such as masturbation 
or what you see in terms of pornography or any disordered sexual desire. They say, I am happy because I am gratifying my senses. That's what, especially the culture that we live in and how it defines what joy or what some would call happiness. Or you see this today, especially among the teens. I mean, I know I am tempted in this myself. Electronics, smartphones, Facebook, texting. Supposedly, if you take these things away, especially from the youth, they won't be happy anymore. It's like they can't live without it. So is this how we're basing our joy, especially as we prepare for Christmas, being attached to things? Well, obviously, that's not what true joy is. Joy is more of an inter interior thing. It has to do with our relationship with God. True joy, if you look at the church teachings, is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's for those who conform their will to God's will. Then joy truly happens within a person. It's really based on grace. So when we were baptized, original sin was washed away. Sanctifying grace came within our souls. We are now justified to go to heaven. Faith, hope, and love were infused within us. We became members of the church, and last but not least, we are now adopted sons and daughters of God the Father. This is what gives us true joy. God himself gives us true joy, especially in the indwelling of the Holy Trinity in our souls by grace. So many times, you know, especially when I'm on mission, let's just say, a couple comes up to me, let's just say it's the husband, and he says, Father, I used to be happy in my marriage, joyful in my marriage, but now after 10 years, I come back home, the house is a mess, my wife is nowhere to be found, and when eventually she cooks for our family, her cooking stinks, and therefore I am not happy anymore. You hear that. Or, not to just pick on the women, you may hear a wife say, Father, I've been married for five years, but my husband comes home every day after work, slams the door, demands food be on the table, and if it's not there, he goes directly to the couch, watches it, his football, and complains about everything. Therefore, I am not happy anymore. It may not happen here, but it certainly happens in many other places. Or you may even hear, and you get this a lot, I'm sure the priest would agree with me, some parents will come up to you and say, Father, we've raised our children in the Catholic Church. We paid for their Catholic education from K all the way through high school and some through college but now they have lost their faith. They don't even go to church anymore. They don't say their prayers and they profess this pagan religion. Therefore, we are not happy anymore. Well, if we base our joyfulness, our happiness on what other people do, then we will never be joyful because we can't control them. They have a free will. God respects their free will, so should we. We should base our happiness and joy with our relationship with God, not on what other people do. You know, there's a wise saying, this is from the Office of Readings from St. Dorotheus, the reason for all disturbance, that is the lack of true joy, is that no one finds fault with himself and always looks outwards. So based on what other people do, rather than your conformity to God's will, interiorly speaking. So hopefully you especially have been preparing for Christmas 
based on the grace of God within you, based on whether or not you say yes to his will. Joy, they say, is the most infallible sign of the presence of God. And so many people have been falling into temptation because of a gloomy, dark soul with no joy. Many times we give in to temptation because we don't have the presence of God, especially within us, because we're so attached to things, or if it's not going our way, then we easily complain and give in to the, that temptation. So let us go especially to Our Lady. I think the Holy Rosary is one of the best ways that we can prepare for Christmas and to have that true joy. Know that right now in the Advent season, really when before Christmas actually happened, Our Lady was pregnant with our Lord. Therefore, she was the cause of our joy, we say. So let us go and pray that rosary, especially the joyful mysteries in anticipation of our Lord's birth. St. Jose Maria Escriva says, I am every day more convinced that happiness in heaven is for those who know how to be happy on earth. So during this Advent season, that is a joyful anticipation, let us be vigilant, especially in prayer. What our Lord clearly reminds us in the Gospels, he says, I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy may be complete.